Rocket didn't come running. He must want to spend the day with Dad. So, good morning everybody, Ryan here. Welcome back to How Farms Work. Today we are in the 4640 and we've got the Kuhn FC 4060 TCR in the back. And uh, what we're gonna be doing today is going down to the valley and going down into the bottom and cutting hay. So Travis just left the 7600 and the John Deere mower. He's gonna do the outside of the field, kind of outlining the maximum or the outsides of where we're gonna be cutting. And then uh, I'm gonna be doing the insides. So we're gonna head down to the valley now. Um, Rocket, not to be found. I let him out of the truck and he took off running. So we're leaving without him this time, I guess. just did the first two outside rounds here up on the hillside now this has already been cut so this is second cutting up here the bottom has not been cut yet so we're gonna want to lay that out as wide as we can now dad and I put the shrouds in on the mower and we wanted to kind of try to see what it's like to have these shrouds in uh, just try to test it out um, I wasn't crazy about using the full width because the merger couldn't pick up every uh, windrow I had to drive it across the whole field instead of just over the windrows. So I thought, you know what, we'll try uh, putting those shrouds back in and see how it does. And you can see here that it's throwing it off to the sides right now because it's not real thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the uh, wide kit over. All you gotta do is pull that out and it should be free to spin. Not that way. like that we're gonna try that and see should narrow it up substantially now uh, looking at the window here it's still throwing it out off to the sides so this is gonna be tetted what I'm gonna do is narrow up those shrouds right here narrow it all the way up so that way when he comes through with the tether it'll be in a nice big pile in the center
been using the center pivot on this quite a bit for the long straight paths to try to just make a lot of long straight rows and I really like having these center pivot mowers. So I'm cutting a 13 foot path, Travis is cutting an 11 foot path, 11 foot 6 inches and uh, since we had different mower sizes we're working separately. Now for videos it would have been cool to get the mowers on side by side. Um, However, in practice, it's just a lot easier, in my opinion, or a lot better to run separately because then you're not trying to work around each other. You don't got to worry about running into the other one and all that other fun stuff. But on those long straight paths, I was running pretty quick. Uh, at times I was running it in C3, C4, which is just below road gear. <laughs> and the more it's cutting really well. Uh, I actually got out and lowered the mower down a little bit because it's cutting kind of high compared to the other mower. It's cutting now about an inch and a half compared to an inch, uh, 1.8 inches before. All I've got left here to do is this little strip. Travis is still down in the bottom and he's actually widening up what's down there because uh, that does flood down there. So there's always a question of what could be lurking in the grass. So he's taking it nice and slow, kind of trying to increase what's down there, trying to go around the outsides and widen it up a little bit. Um, I'm almost done, and I think he's probably almost done too, so that worked out really well. Uh, us working separately on this farm, on these two spots. I mean, we're done at pretty much the same time. What we're cutting up here is mostly clover. So clover has a tendency, uh, if it doesn't dry well, to turn black. So you gotta be kinda careful with how you treat the clover after it's cut. Uh, you don't wanna knock off a whole lot of leaves because it's really easy to lose the feed value in it. But made right, it can be pretty good stuff. standing on the outside of the field near the stuff that was very first cut and that was roughly three hours ago so you can see that it's already starting to dry on top this is these two passes are the passes that Travis did with the 735 and uh, you can tell a difference just in width I mean look how close these rows are take a couple steps over see how far these are apart I don't know if you guys can tell, but I can tell there's a major difference there. So, I really like the Coonmore. Um, I'm really satisfied. The first time I ran it, I was a little skeptical on just operating it. Uh, I didn't want to break it, but I mean, today I put it through its paces and it seemed to hold up pretty well. Uh, one of my bigger concerns with the rubber conditioner would be that it wouldn't be able to put through as much material as the flail, but as far as I can tell, I didn't have any issues whatsoever. It wasn't bogging down at all, and uh, there's not any kind of inconsistencies. If you'll notice with what happened with the 735, there's these clumps here, and deep inside are the wet spots. But if you come over to where 
I hit with the 4060, it's pretty consistent. Uh, about the only inconsistencies on these windrows are where it got lighter and it threw the material on to the right or left, one side or the other. But walk over here and there's not really bunches of, of material that's left to really get and stay wet. So it's pretty much even consistency all the way through. I really do like that mower, holy crap. Wow. Huh. I actually just noticed that. I noticed that looking at comparing the two windrows, how much more the those lumps there are. There's clumps of wet spots. But with this more that's that's very interesting. Nice even lay across the windrow here. It's a little bit more dense right there. It's thinner through here. This is gonna dry nice and well. A little bit thicker through here because that's where the material is being thrown. It's not being clumped up. It's just being thrown in different areas across the windrow, which with that uh, kit on the back to widen in the windrow out, I imagine that's probably partly responsible. It's probably grabbing a lot of the material and throwing it out towards the outside edges. We'll see how Travis feels, whether he can tell a difference or not, but just looking into his windrows, here's another clump. Thick material. I think he's got the 730 narrowed up a little bit more. That might help contributing, be contributing to that clumpiness. But I had it widened out as far as I could with the shrouds and it pretty much split the window here. Oh well, I'll keep you guys in the loop. We'll see how it all dries down. Hopefully we can get this made by the end of the week. They're currently calling for an 80% chance of rain in five, four days from today. So it should be interesting. I'm gonna head back to the farm. That's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching guys. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, all how farms work. And if you guys are ever at a Coon dealership, tell them I sent you. Adios, partners. Not saying those are from me, but I'm saying those are from me. I had to slam on the brakes the other day. I was pulling the rake, and the dolly wheel on the front was kind of spazzing out because it wasn't tightened enough. Tightened enough. And if it does that enough, it can damage the rake. So I had to slam on the brakes, and I accidentally skid a little bit. Didn't mean to do that.